Hello, church family. Nice to see you. Anyone out there? Hello? Hello? What a, what a lovely time this morning. What a rich time. I hope you're hearing what the Lord's saying to you. Um, I've, got, I've got, I mean, I've got an astonishing passage to share with you this morning. God's already been speaking on the themes that I'm going to be speaking to you on these next few moments. We're going through Paul's letter to the Galatians, and we've under the title, Free to Follow. Free to Follow. Freedom. Freedom is something that everybody wants, don't they? I just want to be myself. I just want to be free from restraint. I want to be free from what other people think. I just want to be free and do my own thing, blow everyone else. But the trouble is, you don't have to look very far to see that generally ends up in kind of selfish isolation, and it's not a great joy. It, 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 so freedom, it's kind of something people want to get hold of, but they, they find it hard. Now, I've called this morning Stepping into Freedom, because even as Christians, it's possible to know about freedom but not to, be, not to have stepped into it and be enjoying it, okay? And so I, I, for whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, I want to, I want to take you to one of the, the pinnacles, mountaintops of biblical revelation to show you the panorama of God's plan for you and me, and it involves astonishing freedom. Freedom from condemnation, but freedom from what other people think. Don't you want that? Freedom just to flourish. Well, you listen to this passage. This passage is an absolute mountaintop in Scripture. And I'm reading from Galatians chapter 3 and verse 23. And I pray, Lord, please, may your living word just start burning in some hearts today. Please, please, please. In Jesus' name I ask it. Okay, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 23. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law. We were locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. That the law was our guardian until Christ came. That we might be justified by faith. Now, now that this faith has come, we're no longer under a guardian. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There's neither Jew, Gentile, slave, free, male, female. You're all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heir according to the promise. What I'm saying is that as long as an heir is underage, he's no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. The heir is subject to the guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also we were underage, we were in slavery, under the elemental spiritual forces of the world, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. And because you are his sons and daughters, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts the spirit who calls, cries out, Abba, Father, you're no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has also made you an heir. This is astonishing. This passage, this book, Galatians, sets before us the heart of Christian freedom the fulfilment of our creator God's gracious plan to bring us back from the abyss of our selfish self-destruction into the 
hope and future that he has for us all to bring us home. What a, it's a magnificent passage. So, And I've got three steps that I'm going to go through this morning. Stepping into freedom. Three steps from this passage. But the first thing, before you can take any steps, you need to know you need help. No point taking steps. You need to know you need some help, okay? You need to be aware that you have got a bit of a problem and that you need help, okay? And uh, really, that's a story, the opening chapters of the Old Testament. The Old Testament sort of is, is, helps us to see we've got a problem and God is beginning to open up the answer, the solution, and it, and it grows and grows and grows through the Old Testament, okay? So the Old Testament just... Oh, if you read, you, know, you can read passages there, a cycle of kind of just going their own way, do their own thing. No, turn them back on God, mess, murder, and all the rest of it. There's a cycle of just self-destruction in the Old Testament. It's called sin. It's called sin it's because it's, it's going the opposite way to God. You know, uh, God put man and woman in, in the garden to enjoy, and, and no, we don't want you, we can do it our way. And it, it just leads to selfishness and destruction. And that's the, the Old Testament. That's what it... What, what, sin is doing our own, going our own way, basically, offending a, a holy, righteous, perfect God. Sin. Okay? Because he is perfection. And, of course, Jesus is perfection personified. <laughs> he, he's, it, he's come close to show us what he is like. And of course, the, the Ten Commandments, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart and, uh, and yourself and, and don't murder and, and be, be faithful in your marriage. Don't commit adultery and don't, don't steal and, and, and lie and, and covet. Don't, don't, don't do that. They, they will wreck you. But the Ten Commandments, kind of, they, just, they, they point out the problem, but they don't really take us to the solution, although they point us to the solution. Because it, 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 we, we're just we, 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 we're locked into this place of, uh, I'll see in a moment from this passage we just read, we're, we're locked into this kind of selfish pattern. We're just back into it again and again. I, me, myself, I'm going to do my, oh, the mess, I'm blow everywhere. It, it, it's, a, it's a path to selfish isolation. Okay? And verse 23, I just read, before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up, okay, in jail. Locked up in jail. And when you're locked up in jail, you, you need someone to let you out. That, that's, that's the point he's making. You can't just get out on your own. You can't squeeze through the bars. You can't just try harder. You need someone to unlock the door so you can walk free. Okay, that's this. Is, we get into the gospel, but so, so the law, the kind of the, the law, the the the, the, the box ticking. It, it's kind of the, the Ten Commandments to show us that we we've got a problem. We're locked up. We we, we sin has messed us up. But it's not just the, the a jailer. It's also uh, uh, the word he uses here. What is the word here? Uh, boom, boom, boom. Um, try, a guardian, actually, a pedagogue is a better word because it's a that's. It, 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 the Greek word is a place. Anyway, but it's, 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 a, it's a, a, a tutor, a trainer, someone who has responsibility for you to lead you on the journey so that you can find the Lord. So that, we were stuck. The Old Testament, there's glimpses of the answer, but it doesn't take us all the way. So we need to know that we've got a problem. Do you know you've got a problem? Do you recognise? I, I, you know, maybe there's a cycle of messing up in your life. You just don't, again, again. You need someone to open the door and set you free. That's what this is all about. Okay, so recognize you've got a problem. Step one, here we go. Step one, justified by faith. This is the step. This is colossal. Justified by faith. The word faith comes up five times in just a couple of verses here. Um, you probably spotted it. I won't go through it all again. My, my time is going quickly. Faith. When this faith came, the, the it all changed in the fullness of time. This faith, faith, being justified by faith. I was going to get, um, come on, let's do this. Um, who, should, who should I get up here? Tom, come on. Oh, let's have Tom and Marcus up here. Okay. Now, you know, you've seen this before, but we talk about faith. Would you face that way? Both face that way? He's going to fall over backwards in a minute, and he's going to totally trust you to catch him. Is that all right? 
Do you trust him? Absolutely. Have you got any faith in him? Are you feeling nervous? <laughs> okay, one, two, three. <laughs> You're right. Okay. I mean, it's, it's simple, but, but that's faith. It just puts your life in the hands of someone else. That's faith. And the first step is to be justified just as if I had never sinned by faith. That's the first step. Have you taken that first step? I need help. I'm, I, I'm in, I just can't do this in my own strength. Lord, I'm not going to do it. Lord, I put myself in your hands. Justified. That's that wonderful phrase there. In, that we might be justified by faith. Have you got that? Let's say it right again. You ready? One, two, three. Justified by faith. You put your faith in Jesus. That's where your righteousness comes from. Not through you kind of trying a bit harder. It's one thing to know about freedom. It's another thing to step into it. Have you taken that first step? Oh, Lord Jesus, I give up. You've saved me. You took on... In, in your body on the cross, all my sin. Isn't that liberating? What, is it, what did it say there? You know, uh, when, uh, now that faith has come, you know, the, it, we were locked up until the time to be revealed. We were locked up. This could be your time this morning. Lord Jesus. Oh, crumbs. You took my sin. Can I have the band up? We're going to sing a song. I can't resist. Can you come and... Now, listen, I've got to give you Martin. Listen to Martin Luther on this. This, this chap, th these verses rocked the world in the 16th century, really. Martin Luther and so on. Rocked the world. And it can rock your world this morning. You listen to what um, Martin Luther said about this. Are you ready? Hence, from here on, you must say, I see my sin in Christ. Therefore, my sin is not mine but another's. I see it in Christ. It's a great thing to say confidently, my sin is not mine. My sins have been transferred to Christ. He has them. Did you hear that? I kind of shouted a bit, didn't I? This is magnificent. I've got to give it to you again because it, it's radical. Think about it as I read it out. Please think about it. Maybe you, I don't know, Maybe you messed up years ago and it still plays on your conscience. Maybe you're sitting there this morning and you're, you're feeling condemned because you just feel you're not as good as everyone else around you. I don't know. If any of those things are going on, if, you're, if you cannot forgive yourself something that happened years ago, you've, not, you've come to Christ, you've asked forgiveness, but it, you're still beating yourself up, Please listen to Martin Luther one more time. Hence, from now on, you must say, I see my sin in Christ. Therefore, my sin is not mine anymore, but another's. I see it in Christ. It is a great thing to say confidently, my sin is not mine. My sins have been transferred to another. It's a wonderful thing. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8, verse 1. I hope you learn it. It's great. There's no condemnation. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Isn't that wonderful? Don't you, your status has changed. Someone paid your, not just paid your bail, but got you out and brought you into a new life. That's what it means to be a Christian. Your status changed. You might sometimes feel a bit naff, but, but you, can, you can say to Satan, no, Satan, my sin is not mine anymore. Christ has it. That's what it means to put your faith in Christ. Have you taken that first step? We're going to sing a song. I couldn't resist this. Do you know what song we're going to sing? I forget what it was now. Before the throne of God. Now, you don't have to stand up if you don't want it, but let, please, just... Let's just use this, these words. Step one, if you've never given your life to Jesus, if you've never seen your sin placed on him and away from yourself, if you're struggling with guilt this morning, please hear these words. Take the first step this morning. Okay. Is that okay? Go for it.
second verse back up again please put that second verse I know there's people here today and you you live in condemnation you feel often condemned please look at these words when Satan tempts me to despair has anyone known Satan tempt them to despair ever of course you have of course you have what do you do upward I look and I see him there who made an end to all my sin it's true this is the first step can we sing it? Can we sing that verse one more time? Are we okay for time? make sure in stepping into freedom you've taken step one maybe you need to come back to step one because maybe you've walked backwards a bit as the years have gone by Lord Jesus I step into it isn't it interesting how I think two or three people this morning have said how songs have ministered to them did you notice that Um, I think Fifi mentioned a song didn't she and uh, who else mentioned a song I can't but there's Hey, truth in song is so powerful. Because when you sing, it's not just your mind that's involved, it's your whole being. That's why we sing a lot. Okay. 
But step one. Okay, so let's move on to step two. We'll get the band back for another song probably in a minute. And, but <laughs> this is so important. Step one is justified by faith. It's faith. Step two is family. When you become a Christian, you're born into the family of God. That's what it says here, verses 23 to 26. Listen to this. Um, Verse 26, let's go 26. In Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. All of you who are baptized into Christ, clothed yourself with Christ. There's neither Jew, Gentile, slave, free, male, female. You are one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, you're Abraham's seed. You're part of that whole family of God. The subtext of the Bible is God wants a big family. You were never meant to do the Christian life on your own. You're brought into a family. I love the fact that we're family here. It's important. I think when, when, when Terry Virgo was here, he, before he preached, he said, I love the fact you've, you've kept the, the, the feel of family. And I, that was the highest compliment ever. We're family. We're called into the family of God. God wants a big family, and you're part of it. It's absolutely beautiful. This is who we are. And just to think about Abraham, let me just tell you a bit. Abraham gives us a little picture in the Old Testament of what faith looks like. That's why he's the father of faith. He's like a, an illustration of faith. What, what was it about faith? Well, God said, to, God said to, to Abraham, Abraham, I've got a better future for you than you could ever have on your own. I've got a wonderful future ahead for you, okay? And if you'll just trust me, if you'll just trust me, I'll bring you into it. That's the heart of faith. That's, that, that, that's really what God said to Abraham. If you, this is, you know, Abraham, I, I, I want to just give an illustration of faith here. Well, you know, he, put, he laid everything on the line, didn't he? Abraham. And, and, and he set out, and of course, that's that lovely verse, through you all the nations of the world are going to be blessed. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? We're family, and it's a beautiful family. We read, someone read uh, from Isaiah 2. We had it upstairs in prayer, and it came through this morning. Uh, Isaiah chapter 2, the mountain of the house of the Lord, and all the nations will, be, will gather to it. It's beautiful. I wonder how many nations we've got here. Should we have someone run around with a microphone and find out? I mean, it'd be like, would, is that okay, or would that be crazy? Would that be... It's like, so which... Do you want to run around, Marcus? How many, come on, what nations have we got? As he walks up the aisles, you just grab him and he's going to come all the way up around the aisles. How many nations we got? I'll start with the uh, US. With what? With the US. Oh, <laughs> he's American, you know. Keep going. <laughs> Scotland. Spanish. Ray. What else we got? Don't be shy. Shout out or get, get the microphone to you. Singapore. Singapore. Hooray. Any more over there? Don't be shy. We want to see. We want to know. Romanian. What was that one? Romania. Romania. Where was yes, that? Romania. Romania. Oh, been there. Yeah. Brashoff. We used to go to Brashoff. Italy. Italy. Where are we now? Come on, there's more down the middle. There's loads and loads. Ghana. Hooray. Zimbabwe. Philippines. Philippines. Norfolk. <laughs> Nigeria. South Africa. Wonderful. Marcus, thank you. Sorry, I'm a bit of a... I'm a oh, what have we got here? Australia. Australia. Hooray. We, Portugal we've got over here. Angola. Oh. India. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Nigeria. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Oh, is anyone counting, by the way? Did anyone count? <laughs> Folks. Mauritius. Mauritius. Whoa. This is precious. Oh, what have we got? We, uh, oh, over there. What have we got over there? South Africa. South Africa. Whoa. This is... This is so rich. This is the family of God. It's beautiful. Do you, are you getting the idea? It's Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're family. You were never meant to live the Ipswich. Christian. Ipswich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we love Ipswich. Okay. You, 
I'm trying really hard here, Lord. <laughs> We're the family of God. It's precious. Oh, please, have you stepped into the family of God? Or do you keep it at arm's length? Have you stepped into a, a life group where you can be loved and share your heart, open homes? I hope you've stepped into family. And maybe you just, you know, the, 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 see, here's the, sometimes here I hear people say sometimes, oh, I'm just taking time out of church. I just need to work. No, no, no. That's the very time you need to step into family and process things in family because there's people to help you, pray for you, be there for you and encourage you. Folks, it, it's the family of God. We've just run a Connect course recently, and there's another one coming up. Oh, get con- connected to the family. It's rich, it's diverse, it's beautiful, it's precious, and we love it, and we love being part of it. Don't, and that's why we guard our relationships and don't let the enemy get in and divide and all the rest of it, because it's precious. It's the family of God. Are you getting the idea? I think I've made the point, haven't I? Okay, so there's no more barriers. doesn't matter, rich, poor, Whatever, where you come, we're one in Christ. And we need to learn, you know, don't be too British, okay? Don't be too shy. Or, you know, sometimes, I mean, you know me. I wander around sometimes, and I often don't know people's names, but hey, it's better to say, uh, oh, uh, remind me, uh, than walk by. It's precious, it's precious. Love the welcome team, all that they do. So, family, this is the second step justified by faith into the family of God where I belong, the body of Christ. You've got a part to play, serving, loving, giving, encouraging. You've got a part to play. Have you taken that second step into the freedom that God wants for you? It's really important. I hope you have. It's family. It's precious. In family, we discover our identity, where we fit, the gift that God's given us, whether we're an arm, a leg, a big toe, you know, the body of Christ, the Bible speaks of. You find your identity in the body of Christ. So second step is family. Okay, third step. My third step is very precious, and it's the father heart of God. It's knowing God as your father. Okay, this is a huge, hugely important step. Okay, step number one, justification by faith, is all about status. Step number three is all about feelings, if you like, emotions. It's about knowing that you have been born again, that you've been saved. It's, it, it's, got a, it, it's different. You see, uh, th- this, is, this is really, really precious. And uh, it's about relationship. Step three is about relationship. God being your father. Now, I'm going to give you a quote. For, tell me when you've been here a long time. You've all heard my best quotes hundreds of times, but you're going to get one again, okay? And it's from J.I. Packer, Knowing God. Okay, it's on the bookstore. Every Christian should read this. You don't just whiz through it in a couple of days. You might want to read two or, th- two or three pages at a time. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It, it's a great, great book. Here's my quote from that book. If you want to judge... How well a person understands Christianity. Find out how much he makes of the thought of being God's child and having God as his or her father. If this is not the thought that prompts and controls his worship, prayers, and his whole outlook on life, it means he does not understand Christianity very well at all. Oh, Abba, Father. It's thing about Abba, you see, it's a, it's a, colloquial, it's, uh, it's, it's the papa. So it's not a formal thing. Of babies, they're not, they're, not, they're, not on, you know, they're not on ceremony, are they? Dada, mama. It's the spirit of adoption. This is astonishing, absolutely astonishing. And it's precious. You see, in the Old Testament, the name for God was kind of Yahweh, I am, a bit enigmatic, okay, because God was little bit out there. So it's a bit enigmatic coming to the New Testament and we've come close and it's Abba Father. This is astonishing. This is life changing. Now look, don't you, if maybe you haven't got a father, don't buy the lie that says, oh, I haven't got a father so I can't really appreciate what it means. Oh yes you can. Oh yes you can. I haven't got a Porsche but I can imagine quite well what it would be like to have one. 
I can almost smell the upholstery and everything, okay? So please, don't buy the lie that says you can't imagine you can because there's wonderful revelation here of the Father heart of God. I am, I'm, I'm, I've not had a dad for getting on 50 years, but I know what my heavenly Father is like. The Father heart of God. This is precious, precious, precious. Now look, oh, one other thing. That quote you, you, you read this morning around the breakfast table? Oh, she hasn't got it. No, okay, fine. She hasn't got it. Never mind. Okay. Um, sorry. Okay, where was I? Um, 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 um. I've lost my way now. Um, where was I? Oh, yes. J.R. Packer says this. Adoption tells us the high honour that is ours. Listen to this. Higher than justification. Hmm. In other words, all the pictures we have of salvation, because justification by faith, huge. Packer says, and I agree with him, the whole concept of adoption takes it one level higher. Because in adoption, you choose. You don't just get what's coming your way, if I can put it that way. You choose. I'm going to adopt that. But it's beautiful. Adoption is beautiful Beautiful. And you were chosen. You were adopted. You were specially chosen to belong to the Lord, to be in the family of God. Adoption. That's, that's the gospel. Have you taken this third step? Do you know God as your father? Do you? He's absolutely astonishing. And it's because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls our Abba Father. Now, there's two things. I hope you notice here. There's two sent God, God sent twice in these two verses here, okay? Verse 4, chapter 4. When the set time had come, God sent his son into the world. Okay, that's the first set. He sent Jesus into the world to save you. Okay, that's the first set. To redeem those under the law. But look at verse 6. Because you are sons and daughters, God sent the spirit. There's the second one. He sent the Holy Spirit, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father sent the Son into the world to save you, and he sent the Spirit into your heart to assure you that you know that you are, that you are family, that you belong, that you are loved with an everlasting love, and no one can take it from you. Abba, Father, Abba. Isn't it beautiful? Do you like that? Oh, this is awesome. This is, these are the steps to Christian freedom. Justification by faith into the family of God. Spirit of adoption, Abba, Father. Have you been drenched with the Holy Spirit? Have you been filled, flooded with the Holy Spirit? If you're a Christian, you've been born of the Spirit. Of course you have the Spirit. But have you been flooded with the Spirit of adoption? Abba, Father. Have you, have you asked the Lord to fill you. Have you asked? Have, you know the, the beautiful gifts of the Holy Spirit. That if this is beautiful. He has, God has sent His Spirit into our hearts to cry, "Abba, Father." Martin Luther says about that verse, about "Abba." He says, "Such a very little word, but it meaneth ever so much." Do you see? Tiny little word, "Abba." It's Papa, oh, Father. Oh, I'm loved, accepted. You know we. You can dribble on fathers and all sorts, can't you? Is that irreverent? No, I don't think it is. Abba, Father, do you, do you know this for yourself? Has the Holy Spirit confirmed it in your heart that you belong, that you're family, that you're accepted, and not just accepted, gladly accepted? You know, we read Zephaniah, he, he rejoices over you with singing. I find that astonishing. I used to think he was always frowning over me because I wasn't quite good enough. But he's not frowning over me. I'm an adopted son. He sings over me. He's delighted in me. It's, it's wild. It's true. It's the Bible. It's the third step. Knowing that you, deep in your heart, are a child of God. Abba, Father. This is beautiful. I'd like the musicians to come up. We're going to sing another song. I'm coming to the end, okay? But we've got to sing a song in a moment. It is absolutely beautiful. 
You must don't just think of your salvation in negative terms, forgiven. No, positive terms. Forgiven so that I might come into the family of God and know God as my Father. Please don't think of your salvation just about forgiveness. Wonderful though that is, it was with the purpose of bringing you right into the heart of the family of God, spirit of adoption, where you cry, Abba, Father. And you know, I think there's a lot of Christians who don't have much assurance of their faith. Maybe you do. You lack assurance. Well, this is the way to, be, to, to find assurance. Allow God to pour his spirit into your heart that you would cry, Abba, Father. God sent his spirit into our hearts that we might cry, Abba, Father. Be filled with the spirit. Maybe it's been years. You need a, you need a, a fresh outpouring of the, the, the Holy Spirit, the, 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 the spirit that cries out, Abba, Father, into your heart. Maybe there's some prodigals here this morning and you, you, you kind of know the story and you, but you kind of, you drift off, you've gone away, you messed up. Feel, look, I want you to know, that, you know, you know the story of the prodigal. He, I'm not worthy if you called a son. He's rehearsed his lines. Uh, Father, I have sinned against you and, I, I'm not, and he's going to say, I'm not worthy to be called your son. Before he finishes his speech, the father has run towards him and embraced him and kissed him. This is the father heart of God. If you're a prodigal this morning, you've messed up, you've been away, you feel you're not worthy. Hey, this morning, your father welcomes you home. He welcomes you home. And it's a beautiful step to walking in freedom, justified by faith, into the family of God where I belong, Abba Father knowing that I know that I know that I know. This morning you can take, I wonder which step you need to take or you need to take again to bring you into the freedom of what it means to be a follower of the Lord Jesus. In closing, one more book. The Return of the Prodigal, Henri Nguyen, says this. The dark voices of my surrounding world try to persuade me that I'm no good and that I can only become good by earning my goodness through making it up the ladder. These voices lead me quickly to forget the voice that calls me my son, my beloved, reminding me of my being loved independently of any acclaim or accomplishment. These dark voices can drown that gentle, soft, life-giving voice that keeps calling me my favourite one. They drag me to the periphery of my existence and make me doubt there's a loving God waiting for me at the very centre of my being. Just a tiny bit more and I'll stop. The world I've grown up in is so full of grades, scores. I always try to take my measure against others. Much sadness and gladness of my life flows directly from my comparing. If not all of this comparing is useless and a terrible waste of time and energy. But when I look from my place in the world into God's kingdom, I quickly come to think of God as the keeper of some great celestial scoreboard. But as soon as I look from God's welcoming home into the world, I discover that God loves with a divine love. A love that reaches out to all in their uniqueness, without ever comparing. I could read all of that to you this morning, but I won't. Abba, Father. No more striving, trying, wanting to earn, spirit of adoption, Abba, Father. You listen, this, we're going to sing a beautiful song now. It's scripture, pure scripture. Rejoices over you with, with singing. That's, that's your father. That's your father. Rejoices over you. Do you know that? Come Holy Spirit, please. And I pray this morning you would affirm this as we sing this beautiful song, Come Holy Spirit. Do you want to sing it through to us and then we'll get, perhaps the first verse or whatever, I don't know how many verses there are, but the Father's song. We're going to sing it. Sing it to us and then we'll all join in. Thank you, Tom. And Daisy. Listen. 
to know more of the Father's love for you, just stand with me, sing with me, sing your heart out, reach out to the Lord.